Hello, my name is Mike C and I'm an occupational therapist and I'm also a PhD student here in Japan. Today, I'm going to do my fifth vlog which is about how to address your university teachers properly. Most of the students think that doing a PhD is not necessary or it's something that we just do for the sake of studying but actually people who are doing their PhDs <clears throat> and their master's degrees have some goals not only in the industry but also in the academia or in the universities. We also have a culture in the Philippines where we you know just call any faculty member in the university as professor. Okay. Um, there's really nothing bad about that, um, but we just need to be more uh, specific or educated about this matter of academic ranks and positions because positions and academic ranks are really different things altogether. So I just wanted to, you know, talk to you about and walk you through the different levels or ranks within academia so that you would know if you could call someone professor already. So let's go now to uh, where we all start. So when you finish your bachelor's degree, okay, and all of a sudden you wanted to do more research and you wanted to teach then you would have to apply to a university to secure an instructor rank so that's the first rank that you could that you could normally go into when you want to be in the academe and usually when you are in that rank you would be asked if you would want to go to a tenure track or a non-tenure track. Hopefully, when you want to go to the academe, you would choose the tenure track. Meaning, you would also be asked to do your master's degree alongside with your teaching job in the university. And as an instructor, when you're called an instructor, most of your load or your job is really to do a lot of teaching, a lot of instruction, and more or less you are usually in the classroom or in the laboratory supervising and looking at the learning experiences of students. Okay. But okay, again, I'm I'm talking about the Philippine setting here, so in the Philippines, when you are a bachelor's degree holder, you could actually get a job in the academe as an instructor. Okay, but that does not happen usually in other countries where you need at least a master's degree to go into the academe. Okay, but anyway, going back, so that's instructor. But in most universities, there is a thing called publish or perish, so you need to publish within a certain amount of time maybe three years or five years or else you might not be renewed okay you might be taken out of the tenure track okay so after instructor one to four or one to seven um, you would probably get your master's degree after a certain period of period of time as an instructor and then once you get your degree you will automatically be promoted to assistant professor Yay! Okay, so you will, you are somehow a professor, but you're actually an assistant to a professor. So, and there's a big difference because there are three or four levels of professors, which we will talk about later. Um, an assistant professor usually have at least a master's degree. And this person does not only teach, but also usually do administrative tasks or maybe he would she or she would be given committee assignments and also could be a leader in your department or in your college um, also 
you would be given research load as well and community extension services as well. So your teaching load decreases while your research and administration starts to, you know, put a toll on your workload every week or every month. And more production of research will be expected to you when you become an assistant professor because you need it in order for you to go to the next stage, which is an associate professor. Now, while you are in your assistant professor rank, then you have your master's degree and probably the dean or your senior um, administration would actually tell you to do a PhD. And most assistant professors are usually doing their PhD while they're in that level. And then, so as you gain your PhD units, then your rank within the assistant professor um, spectrum would go higher. So you can be assistant professor three, assistant professor four, until seven, four or seven, depending on what university you're from. And then, once you get your PhD degree, you could now be promoted to an to become an associate professor. Okay. So when you are an associate professor, most likely you have at least a PhD and several publications on a certain field. And with that said, you should be known within your field on a national level. Most likely your teaching load would decrease and then your research load would increase and more administrative and leadership roles would be given to you because you have gained more knowledge, so to speak, and you have gained more networks for your university. So you start doing more national and starting to do international work uh, when you are on an associate professor level. So that's again one to four, associate professor one to four or one to seven, depending on where you are from. And lastly, okay, would be the professor rank. Okay, so I think this is the time that you could call somebody or you could provide a salutation as a professor when they reach this certain level of rank. Okay, a professor is actually a person within the university who produces research, produ produces creative ideas, not only for the university, but also, most importantly, to the community and beyond the community they are from. Okay, so a professor, most of the time, does research, a lot of research, a lot of leadership roles. The professor also teaches, but usually um, provides like innovative lessons and teachings based on his or her research. And that's a very good thing because you get to know a lot of information firsthand from the person who did the research himself or herself. And all the professors must be known within their field on an international level. Okay, so that's what makes, I mean, that's the difference between an associate professor and a professor. You also have professor 1 until 12. So that's the ladder that you need to climb. So as you publish more, as you make more books, as you author more books, as you handle more conferences, uh, you know, as you gain recognition and awards, then that's the time that you could go through like become a professor one to professor four professor seven professor six and so on until you get to the last level of becoming professor and just a bonus if you notice that some would be given a title called professor emeritus or emeriti then that means that this is a retired professor who is still designated and given a a job, a part-time job in a university to actually, you know, provide lectures and guide professors and associate professors in their research. 
but this person is retired retired already and that's a very prestigious um, recognition or title that anyone could have not all professors can become an emeritus professor um, but you know you could always become a professor if you really put your heart your mind and all your efforts in you know exploring ideas researching teaching and becoming a you know a link between industry and the community university to the community and helping people through research and your ideas i just want to clarify again that also the ranks is not e equivalent to a position so for example a dean could be an assistant professor it really doesn't matter depending on you know what kind of job you really like to do but the rankings are really based on your publications production and uh, in the university so again publications is the currency in academia and we need to really be uh, mindful of that but not just do that entirely i still encourage people in the university to really be excellent in teaching and extending their services to the community because that's what a university is all about that's the job of the university to really extend and help develop the community so I want to tell you more about those things but this vlog is really getting longer and longer but I hope you get the point so start addressing your university teachers properly you can just call them ma'am or sir but you can call them professor when they have reached that certain rank the professor rank so that's about it um, thank you so much for listening and if you want to know more about the information that I just told you I made an infographic about it you can access it in my website and I hope to see you again all soon bye bye see you